Hi, welcome to Iggy's Toy Parade and Soldier Review. Once again, this is your host, Iggy. Well, hi guys. Today I have a Combat Man's Equipment Carrying Case. And this was manufactured by Standard Plastic Products. Let's see if I can get a close-up of that. Of Plainsfield, New Jersey. And that was a company that was founded in 1959. And I think they became defunct in 1980. I couldn't find any information about them uh, online. Now, this uh, carrying case they introduced in 1965. And what I mean by unlicensed is that Hasbro did not uh, give their sanction to this product. Uh, they were basically trying to capitalize on the Hasbro's fantastic success with G.I. Joe, which was introduced the year before. Now, you see it in the Sears catalog here for the first time in 1965. And uh, you can also see they advertised it with the G.I. Joe Foot Locker. And what's interesting about it is that it's the same price as a G.I. Joe Foot Locker, which was made of wood, mostly. And this one is made of vinyl uh, covering cardboard. And it says that it's 15 and a half inches long, four and a half inches deep, 10 inches high with compartments for battle gear, a separate locker for uniforms, and it's an ideal place to store G.I. Joe and equipment. It says here that it weighed one pound, eight ounces when it was empty. So it was $2.99, the same price as this. Now, when I was a kid, I had this, but I did not have this. Now, um, another case that I wanted back when I was a boy was this one here. And this one is also unlicensed. And it's actually cheaper, and I like it better than the other one. This one it was $249. And what I liked about it is it also had combat artwork on the front and back of the case. Is that this would fold out and you could stand your figure here, which uh, they have a regular infantryman, but I would have put an MP there. And it's got this barrier that uh, you could put up or down. And it has uh, tracks for the skinniest uh, chassis, Jeep chassis you've ever seen in your life. But I thought it was a pretty cool looking case. Now there is a problem with it. In fact, you can even see it in this photograph of the product. See how this is bent here? Well, that's the problem with this case is that the vinyl covered cardboard would warp. And so like this part here would bend in and then uh, you'd have trouble using these things. They would bend up or down or whatever. But I, I bought one of these online online. Uh, for a while there, I was buying a lot of toys that I wanted when I was a boy and never had. I guess I was fulfilling a, uh, a long-held desire. What did I do with the other page? By the way, if you don't have it, this is a fun resource to have. Uh, the big toy box at Sears, 1951 to 1969. You can see it's pretty dog-eared because I use this quite a bit. And it was published by Classic Toy Soldiers, Inc. And it's still available. And I think it's even cheaper than when I bought it. I bought it for $40. And I think it's now $20. Remember Lost in Space? Man from Uncle Gun, oh my god, 007. Uh, I remember the kids across the street had this and this also. Plus they had this. 
I think this was made by uh, Mattel. Oh, here's the Johnny Seven, the kids cross street also had that. So, I mean, I wasn't totally deprived because I got to play with all of these things because the kids across the street had them. Uh, now, I never have because I think I explained my mom, she didn't uh, approve of things like that. She wanted me to be smart, which was a waste of time. <laughs> Uh, my grade point average in high school, I think, was 1.7 or something like that. It was pretty sad. All right, what year is this one? This is 1967, so I need to... What did I do with my bookmark? All right, not... probably not appreciating close-ups of my aged hand. Look at all this wonderful stuff that we had. All right, this is 1964. And I don't think the locker... This is Stoney. Do you remember him? Mark's put out that one as a competitor to Hasbro's G.I. Joe. But I only knew one kid in the neighborhood. His name was George, and he had one. I had a very difficult relationship with George. We used to fight a lot. All right, so this is 1965. So this will bring us into the year that this product here by Standard Plastic Combat Man's Equipment Case. So let's take a look at that once more. And then what I'll do is we'll take a look at the uh, case and then we'll wrap it up. Oh, guys, what did I do? Oh, here, look, it fell into the book. Okay. Oh, no, this is... <laughs> this, never mind, guys. I already showed it to you, so it's okay. All right, now inside the uh, the carry case, I show an original Army GI Joe with a um, Marine helmet. The helmet I don't think is original; it's a Cotswold collectible, but the GI Joe and uniform are original. The reason why I did this is because the Marines here. They're wearing that, what did they call it, the HBT uniform, which was sort of a herringbone cloth with a camouflage cover on their M1 helmet. I think it was called the M1. I can't remember. All right. So uh, now I noticed something I didn't like about the case is the handle is not smooth under here. So if it was heavy, it would actually cut into your hand. So that was somewhat problematic. What I do like about it is instead of having the latch up here, they have it over here on the side. And I think I like that. So here's the opposite side. You can see it's the same thing. You see the Joe. Okay. Now, if you notice this fire, it, it looks like Mount Vesuvius exploded, or maybe a volcano in Iceland just blew up. And look at the perspective on, on this. Look at the size of this guy. And these guys look like they're no further away than this guy. And look how tiny they are. It's a better view. Of, look at the tiny guy over here. Looks like he's going to be flattened by the Jeep. Okay, this shows it a little better. Uh, you'll notice the size of this guy. What the hell? These guys are way smaller and they're closer to the vehicle. And here again, we have Mount Vesuvius. That's 
possibly Ryan Reynolds. I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, when I was a kid, I didn't have a critical eye for anything. I thought this was fantastic. I still do kind of think it's kind of cool. All right, so let's open it up and take a look inside. And you'll discover some of what I was talking about, the warping of the uh, vinyl-covered cardboard. Okay, let's lift it up so you can get a better view, although the Joe might tumble out. That's one thing I didn't like about the case is that the Joe uh, slides around in the seat and he goes down like this and then you can't see him driving the Jeep. So that was a problem. And I thought they should have put a steering wheel underneath this here so that when you looked in the window, you would see him sitting there with his hands on the steering wheel. Also, if it had a steering wheel, it would help hold him in place in the seat. So uh, that's some, now look at the severe bending here. See that? It's supposed to be like this, but it's really bent. And these things here, I've seen some of these that had a uh, plastic, um, a plastic bin like this, and it's got it says combat gear. This is an original GI Joe uh, deep sea diver helmet. That's pretty cool. Let's, I'm going to send my thumb into the depths of the ocean. There's my thumb. You want thumb? You can have thumb. You know, I don't ever recall calling, I don't ever recall calling uh, the rifle I was assigned a gun. I don't remember anyone calling them guns. I don't know. Maybe they do now. I don't know. Anyway, let's go in here and you could put gear in there and up in here. Let's set him up in the seat again. So it's kind of nifty little case. And then plus with the other one, what I plan to do is uh, when I move, which hopefully happens this year, I'll set this up on display with a figure inside it. Like I got plenty of soldiers I could put on display, you know, because of the forties, the 40th anniversary Joe's. And I'll also set up an MP, um, with the other case. And then with the uh, GI Joe footlocker, I'll have it open so you can see the, the, uh, artwork inside in the tray. And that'll be a fun way to display these. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Would you buy this for $2.99? I would. I paid a little more for it on eBay than $2.99. Um, and the other case I showed you is only $2.49, which was 50 cents less than the official G.I. Joe Foot Locker. This one being the same price as the official G.I. Joe Foot Locker. Okay, guys, that's all I've got for you this time. I want to thank you for coming. Let's show him. I'm sorry about that flash on the uh, plastic. Anything that can reflect light does. Uh, if I turn this off, though, you can't see, it, see that. You can't see it at all. See how dark it is? So let's turn this back on. If I hold it on an angle, we can avoid that. So I'll, I'll just do that for you. Let's do it this way. That works. Okay, guys, that's all I got for you this time. Thank you for coming along again. And uh, for those you, of you who've enlisted in the Iggy Army, I want to thank you very much. And uh, I encourage uh, you guys that are just browsing to uh, uh, check out my channel and maybe even subscribe if you like what you see. I have about 242 videos that you can watch. 
and on different subjects, of course. Okay, that should do it. So I'll say goodbye. Uh, um, I can't think of anything else to add right now. So I'll say goodnight. Bye, guys. Thank you.